Hi, hello. Um, it's the 13th of December, 2016. Uh, everyone's been on me for the past year or so to start to do a diary or not do a diary, do a diary, do a book, write this, write that, write this. So what I thought I'd do is just do like a diary to keep and, uh, well, tell you where it all began. Um, Christmas of 2014, I started to feel a little bit ill. Didn't think nothing of it. Had a cough. Really didn't think nothing of it at all. Um, worked. Work drove me into the ground. Work, 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 work. Had me working all the hours under the sun. And, and I was ill. And my wife kept saying to me at the time, take some time off. Take some time off. You're knackered, you're real. You need to take some time off. And I was being pressured so much by work that I just thought work was more important than my life. Um, then got nearer to Christmas, got a horrible cough, was getting worse. I remember working Christmas Eve and saying to oh, the night before Christmas Eve, in fact, and saying to some of the guys, oh, look, you're killing me, you're running me into the ground, I'm knackered, I'm tired, and, uh, and so on and so on. And anyway, Christmas Eve took my wife around, shut the lights. We drove around looking at Christmas lights all night in the car, and you just don't think nothing of it. Just felt ill, kept coughing, 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 coughing. Didn't think nothing of it at all. Um, got home um, Christmas morning, I got up and oh my god, I felt so ill. I felt oh, like, as ill as I've ever felt. And I said to my wife, look, I'm sorry about Christmas. I've got to go back to bed. And quite understandably, my wife, my daughter was upstairs. Uh, my wife thought I was scamming her, going to her mum's. And, which is the kind of thing I would have done back then, because that's how I was. And, uh, oh, God. And then that was it, really. That's where my life just becomes a blur. Is my wife come on Christmas night. I remember standing on the balcony and all my innards just falling out of my body, everything just come out everywhere. It felt like my hands and legs were eating themselves, it was burning from the inside, it was it was absolutely terrible. It was oh and that's it, that's all I remember. Um next thing I remember is I woke up around the end of January. Um, I woke up to be told that I'd be losing this arm from the shoulder, this arm from the elbow, and I'd be losing both my legs from the groin. Um, I was also told that I'll be on dialysis till the day I die, and I'd never be able to breathe unaided. And I was like, oh, shut up now, it's not going to happen to me, it's the wrong person, and so on. And then that was it, like several doctors told me, there was one doctor at the time, he was an absolute arsehole, and if I ever to see him or find out who he was, I would spit in his face. Um, he didn't even say a word to me, uh, he just gave me the actions at the time of where they was going to cut my limbs off from, and I was absolutely devastated, I was truly, truly devastated. And then, uh, sorry, getting a little bit tearful now, it's, it's, you can imagine it bad time in my life and I actually laid in the bed um, told him it's not me it's not me it's not me and then I just cried and I cried and my wife come up I cried some more I cried I cried for about three weeks uh, just uncontrollable crying when no one was around I wouldn't show anyone what was going on and I was just broken broken person and then one day I just decided, that's it, no more, no more tears, no more crying, uh, that's the end of that, I ain't doing it, I'm going to fight this and I will beat it. And that's been my attitude ever since, with the help of the girls on Elizabeth Fry, were all bald in and they were truly amazing, um, Sister April, Amazing lady, absolutely amazing lady. Um, she doesn't realise how important she was to me at the time, but she was a very important person in my life at the time. Uh, Caroline, Kelly, Rhea, you, you were just all amazing to me when I was a broken man. You was there. Um, I can remember Sister April, 
um, fighting to get me to eat solid foods again because I was being fed for a tube and it just hurt my stomach and she was on me you need to eat proper food you need let's get you back up the chart and she arranged to get the dietitian to come and see me and the uh, dietitian came that says uh, she's seen me and they was going what was the first thing you'd love to eat and I was like oh some marmite on toast or jam on toast anything on toast and sister April brought me in a jar of marmite or she had marmite sorry there and the first thing I ate was jam on toast and it was absolutely it. and then that evening I was talking to Caroline and at the time she said well oh what would you love to eat more than anything and I went oh McDonald's cheeseburger and that's just me all over and anyone that knows me knows I'm a fat fuck I love all my food and everything and, uh, then um, Abby brought me in the cheeseburger from McDonald's but Caroline which again it means so much to me at that time she stayed after a shift and she cut up the cheeseburger and she fed it to me and that was it but back to step I think I got a little bit of an answer to myself but the dialysis I was told I'd be on dialysis forever I had two shots of dialysis and I was so lucky that my liver and kidneys uh, kicked in um, at the time I had a really good physio that was working on my lungs and I was getting up and we was doing exercises and breathing exercises every day and she brought me up and she got me breathing properly again and so the, they was the sort of things we were fighting at the time um, my limbs that was dead everyone told me they were dead there's nothing I can do about it but I chose to exercise and constantly keep them moving even though they was dead at the time I had to learn to move again I was just dead in the bed and I had to learn to do this and do that and do this and do that and uh, we managed to get me back to where now right uh, well this is a bit further down the line it's, well, it's kind of confusing because it's such a long timeline of what things went over and how long they went over and everything but um, I can remember I was in Basildon and the amputee people wanted to come up and cut my limbs off and Sister April said no um, I actually recall her being quite abrupt and swearing at them which was a fantastic thing because I think if it weren't Sister April I wouldn't have had the chance I had she was the one that pushed me to go to Broomfield and she's the one that pushed the plastic team to get involved and everything um, she got plastics to come up and see me from Broomfields and they decided that they would take me on as a patient and the relief of that because I just think that the Basildon team not nurses or anything but the team that amputate just wanted to cut it off they didn't want to save anything they just wanted to get it off and then deal with it after whereas Broomfields had a different mentality we was going for see what nature will save before we chop it off so Valentine's Day was coming up by then and uh, we was like oh what are we going to do what are we going to do for Valentine's Day and I asked one of the nurses Rhea if she could get me some Valentine's cards for my wife and my daughter from me and uh, she was due in that night the night 13th of February and she was due to come in and they moved me they moved me to Broomfield so Rhea brought these cards in and she was probably stuck with them in the end to be honest but they moved me over to Broomfields where I met the craziest bunch of girls you're ever going to see the, the, the Mayflower Ward girls were absolute nutters and again it's what I needed at the time they picked me up they made me like really upbeat and Sonia, Karen and Joe they was a oh, phenomenal bit of nursing they done with me I was really upset that I'd been moved from Basildon to Broomfield I understand why because it was to fix me and everything but to be moved from where I had good nurses to somewhere where I've got nurses that was of the same mind that was a fantastic pick up for me that was a, 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 a amazing pick up for me it was it was like oh they're, they're just nutters and they're still nutters now and I'll love until the end of my days but that's another story so I was on Mayflower Ward for a little while met Sam the physio who brought me in a load of DVDs she brought me like, 
show that I could watch because the stuff at Royal Mail was amazing. Um, bought me a DVD player and Sam bought in the physio, she bought me in a load of DVDs, so I had more of a selection to watch and everything and me and Joe was coming up with new stupid ways to so I could eat sweets and drink drinks and everything like that and it was just really fun, so much fun that the Mayflower was all but then politics, don't get into politics, but I got moved to Stock World, which again I was so upset the day they moved me to Stockwold and it was the day after it really hit me and I was laying in the world and I, I just couldn't be bothered. I had had enough of fighting, I'd had enough and I realised that there's always going to be small people in the world that are going to do their best to upset people and I got moved on to Stock and I was, I was just so low, I didn't want to live no more, just had enough, absolutely had and then I met Angela and oh sorry and Ange I love Ange and I will, I will love Ange till the day I die she stuck with me on my darkest day it was truly my darkest day I did not want to live I had enough I just didn't want to fight this at all anymore I'd had enough of fighting where I'd got to and there was this woman that I'd never met amazing HA, she just would not leave me alone that day and I was laying there thinking just go away please, I, I don't want you around me but she just tried her hardest that day to make me smile, she kept me talking all day to keep me alert and, it, and I didn't want to leave that day and she just, she was just there and she didn't cheer me up that day but the fact that she tried so hard I would not leave me alone out there again and I will love her till the day I die. She moves in my mind, went through a lot with her. So then I'm on another strange world, having to explain to everyone that, that what they've got to do and do it differently, what had happened to me and so on and so on and so on. But lucky enough, again, amazing, amazing bunch of girls, the girls on stock. Again, they're another reason why I fight so hard as I fight because they're lovely, they're truly lovely, and they're selfless. To understand, like, I was a head in a bed, I couldn't really do much, and these girls had to do everything for me, every little thing for me, and my wife at the time had to do every single little thing for me, and they just done it. And in my head, I could never work out why. They just done it. They just every qualm, every little thing I needed, the, the bum wire to the wee, the, the everything, they were just there. And amazing, absolutely amazing. Wash, if I needed a wash, I'd let them in. A little Irish girl at the time, and she was lovely. Hey, she, hey, she used to spend a lot of time in with me and we'd have a laugh. And there was like, plenty of people at the time that we'd have a good giggle and I, I, I truly loved it 